ったりします。I'm the Japanese moderator. My name is Tatsuo Yamasaki. In this session, we will talk about the future of digital technology and Sano Japan cooperation. According to the routine, both sides have invited. Heavyweights uh, panelists to participate in today's uh, forum. First, uh, we will give each uh, speaker five minutes to share their views, uh, followed with uh, free discussion uh, with the three minutes for each uh, interaction. Uh, I will say a few words first. Subforum on digital technology. Uh, this is the third one for this uh, forum. And we see some changes in the participants. And there are also some panelists who have participated in the subforum three years in a row. I also moderated uh, this session in the past. Uh, we talk about the rapid uh, digitization and uh, identify opportunities uh, for the two sides uh, to engage in collaboration. This is the third such uh, sub forum focusing on digital technology. I would like to make uh, a proposal uh, that is uh, we should uh, not uh, be contented with uh, discussion. We should uh, identify some deliverables by focusing on the digital field uh, collaboration. We hope that uh, after today's meeting, let's uh, find out if we could uh, actually produce some outcomes. I hope to invite your comments and the suggestions in this regard. Uh, we only have uh, two hours. Uh, can we come up with some deliverables? You might have the question. Last year, uh, given a uh, deepened uh, competition between China and the US in technical field, at that time, we discussed uh, RCEP. Uh, there are rules governing the e-commerce. Uh, at that time, I said that uh, since uh, both China uh, and Japan are members, so we should reach agreements on the rules. And uh, last month, we did reach uh, consensus on the rules governing the e-commerce. E and uh, number one rule governing e-commerce e is uh, to tax on the e-commerce. Number two, uh, we do not impose the rule that you have to set up the server uh, in the local country and uh, there should be a free flow of uh, the uh, data. Number four is protect uh, personal information. And uh, we should develop rules governing the uh, privacy protection. I can see Chinese uh, panelists, uh, they come from uh, globally renowned uh, enterprises. Uh, you represent uh, leading technology and the leading platforms.
maybe uh, some of the companies uh, are not well known for uh, have a positive uh, uh, reputation. Maybe some company is well known because uh, uh, they were put on the uh, sanctions by the Trump administration. Or uh, maybe you were put on sanction because of your high technology. But uh, because uh, of uh, some uh, non transparent uh, uh, governmental policy and uh, those uh, uh, technology might be used uh, uh, or abused, that's why uh, the company was put on the sanctions list. Uh, maybe you think that uh, it's uh, the government that developed the rules, uh, but uh, uh, the uh, private sector experts uh, could uh, share their views uh, in the process of uh, formulating the rules. Uh, I hope we could engage in candid and open exchanges from the Japanese uh, side. We have uh, uh, members of the parliament. Uh, I hope that uh, we could uh, uh, openly share your views. Uh, next, I would like to give the floor to the Chinese moderator. Good afternoon. This is uh, the third such sub uh, forum. I fully agree as uh, Mr. Yamasaki proposed. Uh, not only we should uh, engage in the uh, conceptual discussion, we should uh, aim for some uh, concrete uh, deliverables. Uh, this is the second time I attended this uh, forum last year. Uh, I also moderated the Chinese side. Today we see some older friends uh, coming back and uh, see the new friends as well. From Chinese side, uh, we do see some uh, changes. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to briefly introduce to you the Chinese uh, panelists. Firstly, we have a uh, director from Torch High Technology Industry Development Center, Ministry of Science and Technology, Mr. Jia Jingdun, and the President of the Global Governance uh, uh, from Huawei, Mr. Xu Zhiyu, and the Senior Vice President from iFlat Tech Corporation, uh, Jiang Tao, uh, Vice President uh, from uh, uh, Alibaba, Liu Song, as well as uh, VP from uh, Tencent, uh, from Zhao Jianan, uh, Zhao Jianan will join us online. We know digital economy uh, is uh, developing rapidly, uh, which has attracted a lot of attention from across the world, particularly following the outbreak of uh, COVID-19. Uh, by connecting uh, people, connecting uh, goods via uh, uh, data. It has opened up a new space as uh, we see disruption to the physical world. Could the digital economy become a new form? Uh, that is a question uh, being studied by many experts. Both China and Japan are large economies in terms of uh, digital economy of the top. Uh, digital economy is the US number one, China number two, Japan number four. Uh, with such a uh, large uh, size uh, means both uh, countries are leading companies uh, in terms of uh, the digital economy. Chinese digital economy, uh, since we have the statistics in the last three years, we see rapid growth. In 2017, the size of the digital economy is over 27 trillion RMB. In 2018, it's 31 trillion RMB. In 2019, it's 35 billion trillion RMB. It accounts for one third of the GDP uh, in China. In the course of developing the digital economy, we see another important change that is uh, the capitalization of uh, data, information, and uh, technology, and uh, data, uh, they have become a form of asset. There are around 9 trillion RMB yuan of uh, uh, digital uh, data asset, which account to 10% of the total GDP in 2019, uh, which account to 5% of the total uh, asset uh, in China. That means uh, in the development of the digital economy, 
particularly in the 2C market, we see um, remarkable progress, however. We observe that uh, players and enterprises, uh, entities and the individuals uh, uh, in the digital economy, uh, they use a lot of equipment uh, and uh, parts uh, supplied by Japanese uh, manufacturers. Uh, it uh, shows that uh, in the integrated development, both uh, uh, China and Japan have uh, done a lot of work. Uh, in China, first we engage in innovation, then we uh, and we try to regulate. In the Japan, you think about regulation first, uh, then uh, you innovate. I believe that is uh, a relative uh, a contradiction. Without innovation, the regulation would not have no idea where to strengthen oversight. And uh, if we allow the innovation, uh, without any oversight, uh, there could uh, be uh, undesirable consequences. Uh, that's uh, why uh, panelists from both countries uh, need to discuss these issues. The panelists uh, today have uh, uh, prepared themselves for this uh, sub-forum. I believe uh, some uh, uh, panelists uh, are from China uh, would like to make some uh, uh, proposals, uh, suggestions uh, to the Japanese side. Uh, we hope that under the UN framework and uh, under the RCEP framework uh, and under the Sano Japan framework, uh, we could uh, form a tangible collaboration at the government level, business level, private uh, uh, citizen level. I look forward to such kind of uh, outcomes. Uh, I will now give the floor back uh, to uh, Mr. Yamasaki. Thank you. From the Japanese side, uh, I would like to introduce our panelists. Uh, please uh, briefly introduce yourself. Let's uh, follow the sequence uh, uh, listed on the page. Uh, Mr. Ito, please. Uh, I'm a member of the parliament. Uh, my name is uh, Tatsuya Ito. This is the second time I attend uh, this uh, sub forum. I uh, participated in the forum last year. Uh, Mr. Yamasaki uh, talked about uh, RCEP. From the geopolitics perspective, uh, uh, it's of great significance that we have assigned the RCEP. Uh, you have uh, mentioned in the digital economy and uh, this uh, framework uh, RCEP should uh, play its uh, role. And we need to develop new rules and uh, the uh, framework of uh, global norms. From the perspective of uh, security, we could allow some uh, uh, ex exceptions. But if there are too much exceptions, uh, the framework would lose its uh, significance, uh, would be irrelevant. Uh, by working with uh, the uh, private sector, uh, we, should, we can develop this uh, framework uh, so that we could uh, sign and reach a consensus uh, on the specific rules governing the digital economy. Next, uh, uh, let's uh, alternate between the two sides. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Jia Jindun, please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm uh, from uh, the Ministry of Science and Technology, the Torture Center, that's uh, in charge of uh, scientific uh, technological innovation, uh, high tech companies, uh, and high tech industry, and high tech uh, park. Uh, it's a great honor for me to attend today's uh, sub forum uh, focusing on the uh, digital technology and the uh, digital economy to engage in in-depth uh, um, exchanges with our Japanese uh, counterparts. Back to you, Mr. Yamasaki. Thank you. Next one is the uh, advisor of uh, NGT data. 
uh, Mr. Iwamoto, I'm uh, Iwamoto. Just uh, like uh, Mr. Yamazaki, this is the third time I attend uh, this uh, forum. Uh, I will start uh, my presentation following the pandemic. Uh, digital technology uh, has played a very important role in all the countries. Uh, uh, even without the pandemic, the digital transformation is already ongoing. Why we attach so much importance to the digital transformation, we need to look back at the history in the last three years. So when I came to this sub forum, I said CP2. Uh, storage and the internet uh, is the uh, three key technologies in the last uh, few decades uh, have uh, grown ex uh, explosive growth. And the way the uh, CPU network uh, and the storage of from 1969, the human society uh, uh, landed on the moon. The CPU then compared to now, there will be a difference, the gap of one million fold. The internet, uh, uh, the network, uh, the gap is even greater. A few years ago, Silicon Valley. Valley. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Talent. As I said, that the development of science technology may change the society. But the uh, happening of COVID 19 has brought lots of impact to people's lives. Actually, big data is here only for uh, over 10 years. And uh, a decade ago, when economists mentioned that data use is like a fat. So how can we give the better goal and about the law of data that if everyone's being uh, seen? in like U.S. data, and how we, can we allow them to read those data? And many American users are uh, uh, accusing the American big tech companies, same thing happening in Europe. Yeah, Europe. So, um, uh, and the big data, then there is the containment of big data that is the global issue. Japan want to have a uh, that libel data has to be really low. Uh, that is our global solution. But who owns that data? Uh, what, who the data belongs to? Uh, we have discussed this issue in the past uh, forums, but due to different political systems, we, so about like uh, the technical people, they can enhance developmental society and they are doing R&D for the benefit and well-being of humanity. That is the common thing. That is the thing that we all need to remember. And then AI, our transportation, ability, technologies in that process. And from now on, AI strengths and development will change the and transform the human society. If we can use AI in that way, then it will definitely benefit humanity, but otherwise it may not. So OECD, including Japan, has been discussing how we can better uh, regulate AI and play the AI role in a better way. And so it's not on, we cannot only depend on the developing side. So the it's because the AI they can have self learning. So we, that's why we also need the input from the user side. And I'm expected to have discussion with Chinese journalists as well to exchange our ideas and. Hope that we can come uh, to a conclusion. Uh, with understanding. Okay, uh, let's give the floor to Chinese side. Okay. Um, next, let's give the floor to Mr. Xu Zhiyu to um, share with us his speech. Uh, respected Mr. Feng Hanting, Mr. Yamasaki, representative from different companies, good afternoon. On behalf of Huawei, I'm very glad to join this afternoon's 
forum on digital economy and explore, discuss the uh, topic. Actually, since the outbreak of the COVID-19, actually digital economy has brought lots of new driven forces. And um, um, we would say that it's continuing to release the power connectivity, allowing people to restore healthy lives and promoting the continued recovery of industry and society. And the value of ICT application has been revealed like never before. Just like Mr. Fong mentioned that actually according to a report from Oxford Economics Institute, it is estimated that by 2025, the share of digital economy in global GDP will rise from current 50% to about 25%. And um, uh, China um, uh, ranks second with a scale of 5.2 trillion US dollars. So we would just say that um, Germany, Japan, UK ranked in the third, and the economy of the top five countries accounted over 70% of total to the economy of 74 economies. And uh, industries of finance, transportation, energy, manufacturing continue to embrace digital technologies like 5G, optical networks, AI, and cloud computing. So traditional industries, they can uh, have this kind of transformation upgrading. So I believe that with the support of the two governments from China and Japan, the digital economic cooperation between China and Japan can be have a huge space. And I'd like to share with you is three directions. First, that we need to open cooperation between Chinese and Japanese companies uh, so that we can jointly create a digital future. Uh, both China and Japan have industrial advantages, innovative spirit, and the digital economic development has great potential for development. Japan is an industrial strong power with a very dense industrial network. They are also occupying the middle and high end of value chain and they have their own industrial advantage in the digital transformation. In the meanwhile, Japan's digital economy has actually entered the state of intelligence, uh, which is not only informationization, but more like intelligence. So, um, like the band, uh, large bandwidth, low latency, and wide connectivity, if combined with all these technologies, the ICT infra infrastructure and AI uh, can be supported with ubiquitous computing power. Um, Huawei has established a branches in Japan in 2005, and we found that there are lots of a uh, natural complementary relationship between Ch Japanese company and Huawei. Because Huawei has been good at developing algorithms and engineering integration, yeah, while Japan has lots of experience in uh, processes, physics, chemistry, and materials. For example, um, over among all, over 1,800 component Huawei's flagship mobile phone, uh, Japan actually supplied over 80% of that components. So we can see that the Japanese companies, they actually through Huawei's network and the industry chain to provide and supply the component and product uh, to the world. So that is the area where we think that we can help the Japanese then to have le rapid commercialization. Second, Huawei, as Huawei, we respect digital sovereignty. Uh, the digital economy has great potential. And in the meantime, we also see some challenges. Mr. Yamasaki has mentioned that some of the business being restricted. Actually, uh, one of Huawei's uh, advantage is that uh, Huawei has already put the um, uh, put the network security and privacy protection as the high standard in internally. So I think that we would like to make our due contribution for the data security. And lastly, I would say that the digital economy is really depending on uh, industrial environment as well as innovative talents. We'd like to have more discussion cooperation with Japan on this. So through open cooperation, I hope that we can achieve more fruits. Uh, I'll stop here and later I'd like to uh, join the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Xu. Mr. Xu mentioned the three 
uh, areas for collaboration. Uh, one is for the digital collaboration in the future. China and Japan has complementary advantage to each other. Uh, second is about the digital uh, sovereignty. Then we need to have mutual respect on this, especially Huawei has put the uh, data security, network security, and privacy into its highest standard internally. And uh, Mr. Xu also mentioned that China and Japan should have more co cooperation in talent uh, fostering and industrial chain uh, in those areas. Okay, uh, let's now give the floor back to Japan. Okay. Uh, let's give the floor to Mr. Suzuki from um, Okay, Mr. Suzuki, Executive Officer, the C CTO um, of Hitachi. This is my first time to join this forum. I'd like to talk to you about my observation of digital economy. So, I new uh, values, new uh, suggestions can be shared among all of us. First of all, digital society. In terms of digital society, the biggest issue is the management of data and uh, personal privacy as well as the public interest, how to balance that. Those two sectors are very important. Especially the uh, first point about the data management. Data, uh, by nature, the owner of data should manage those data. That is a foundation so that we can use data to create new values. So to create social values, environment values, uh, based on my company's uh, philosophy. And uh, data need to be controlled, that is very important. And at present, some countries, they don't have very specific clear rules and regulations. If possible, I hope that we can have a consistent regulation across the globe. I think that would be an ideal situation. Let's give you, let me give you an example. In my company, uh, we do, we, we, together with another Tokyo company, we're doing the management of the in-station situation because that's really you know, touching upon personal information. We will catch some uh, moving uh, images of people, but the owner of those data are the user themselves. We are just use, apply those data. We are just providing a service. I think that is important. Second, personal rights and uh, public interest, how to balance the two. Regarding this, uh, our company, Hitachi, have a global forum on uh, digitalization. And uh, we mentioned that uh, APTN concept. So, uh, following the public rules to use this data. Uh, if without the, uh, uh, without consent, uh, we can use those data based on following the public existing rules. That is okay, acceptable. Uh, for example, like images, we can use that. But when our company are using those data, we actually need to get the consent of those owners. And only with the consent, then we can utilize those data uh, and play its value. For example, we can use those data to fight against the criminality. So when we balance the uh, personal interest and public interest, uh, the, it is important to get the consent of those uh, individuals. This is very important. And uh, the protection of personal information, um, how to do the imbalance, I think it's maybe different uh, country by country, but we need to think that in a, a more comprehensive way and based on a balanced situation to see that uh, we need to think about uh, government and uh, public and others. So I also hope that we can have more collaboration in this area with China as well. 
Uh, thank you very much. Now let's give the floor back to China side. Thank you, Mr. Suzuki. Okay, let's give the floor to Mr. Jiang Tao from China side. Mr. Uh, Yamasaki, good afternoon. I am Jiang Tao, come from Eiffel Attack. This is my second time to join the Beijing Tokyo Forum. And uh, uh, our AI platform have uh, more than 1.3 million developers across the globe. And there are um, over 1 billion of the data usage every day. I'm very glad to discuss with my Japanese counterpart about the um, digitalization, digital economy. I'd like to focus on the role of AI in society. I think that uh, AI is really hot topic than everyone paying attention to. So first of all, I would say that AI has been more widely used in digital economy and it will bring profound changes on society because it will transform the uh, labor structure, whether it's physical laborers, whether it's lawyers, teachers, um, all these intellectual labors, this kind of structure may be impacted by AI. So this is not only about economic development, also the social production development. It uh, could also have some impact uh, on the order in the society, uh, in the rural uh, agriculture period, 90% uh, of people are farmers. Uh, and so the values are differentiated as the values of all the nobles and the rasta the farmers. In the industrial era, it has uh, changed. Uh, going forward, uh, maybe only small uh, proportion of the people just uh, work, 95% just uh, consume. So, under such a uh, kind of a social division, the social ethics and the order is a new uh, question we need to explore. Going back to the topic of AI and the digital economy, I would like to share two points to discuss with our Japanese peers. With uh, in, uh, continuous development of uh, AI and uh, digital technology, I believe there is an immense space for two countries to collaborate. Number one, in the basic research related to AI, China and Japan are highly complementary to each other. In terms of industrialization, a lot of Japanese companies made an investment in China. A lot of Chinese companies have started to invest in Japan in terms of the AI field. Again, the, we see increasingly more a discussion of a collaboration. That's the first point. Secondly, AI is an important driver of the digital economy uh, for both China and Japan and the whole world need to deal with the challenge, including the privacy issue and the protection of the data. A lot of countries, including China, have taken actions from the government level to the uh, company level. We need to work together. Chinese government and the trade associations and the businesses has come up with uh, responses uh, to improve uh, 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 privacy protection. These are my uh, uh, main points. I will not uh, elaborate now, and uh, we could uh, engage in further discussion during the uh, free discussion session. Thank you, Mr. Jiang. 
uh, he mentioned in the agricultural euro, 95% uh, engage in the manual labor, 5% uh, consumers. Uh, that's why uh, there is a hierarchy of the noblemen and uh, the laborers in the industrial euro. Uh, uh, most uh, people are consumers. That's why we have uh, the value of uh, everyone is equal in the new euro. Oh, maybe only 5% of people uh, work and uh, 95% of them are workers. Uh, does that mean that 95% of people are noble men and the 5% uh, they just enjoy working? We can discuss that uh, this interesting topic. He also mentioned for iFlatTech in uh, information security and the privacy protection, the, priv the right of the individual uh, to be balanced with uh, the uh, right of uh, uh, the um, uh, general public. Now I would like to pass uh, the floor to the Japanese side. Next, I would like to give uh, the floor uh, to the speaker from uh, Kaushiba, uh, Mr. Shimada. For a long time, I worked in Siemens. It's a German company. I worked for a long time in uh, Germany and in UK. Two years ago, I joined uh, Toshiba. Now I'm in charge of uh, uh, digital uh, operations. I also have a lot of Chinese friends. Uh, we had uh, in-depth uh, discussions. I feel I'm uh, very impressed by Chinese uh, culture, uh, Chinese uh, character. So I'm very glad to have this opportunity to participate in this forum with our Chinese friends. I would like to talk from another perspective, uh, from a more macro perspective, despite uh, the impact of uh, the COVID. Uh, we see some sectors being uh, strengthened, uh, some weakened, uh, and digitalization has been an important uh, tool. Many people concerned that uh, would uh, such changes make us more isolated? If each country would take itself as a center, would we encounter historical tragedy as happened in the past? Our top priority is to safeguard the peace. That means each country need to open up its doors to engage in cultural exchanges, economic exchanges. That is one key point. From that perspective, digital tech sub forum, we need to talk about the flow of uh, high-tech high information to facilitate uh, the uh, flow of uh, information. I have uh, many Chinese friends. I talk to them uh, very openly so that uh, we could uh, build a uh, mutually trusting relationship and uh, gradually we could uh, reach consensus. And top of those uh, consensus, uh, we could uh, further enhance uh, mutual trust uh, so that we could uh, securely exchange information through such an interaction. We could establish a framework for discussion. RCEP is an uh, important step forward. And uh, the RCEP framework uh, between China and uh, Japan, uh, which uh, data can we engage in more? exchange on the private sector, we could uh, discuss it uh, to come up with our uh, proposals uh, to share our wisdom. We should not uh, close the door, we should uh, uh, make the door uh, widely open. Next, I would like to give the floor back to the Chinese side. Uh, you have worked in Siemens and uh, Toshiba. I highly agree with uh, what you said. Uh, we should uh, all open our doors and uh, to exchange the information so that we could uh, minimize misunderstanding so that we could uh, um, 
facilitates mutual interest and growth. Next, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Liu Song from Alibaba. It's a great honor for me uh, to join this uh, sub forum once again, together with uh, Mr. Yamasaki. Uh, two years ago, I went to Japan to visit uh, our Japanese friends' uh, uh, exhibition of uh, the IoT technology. In the last two years, uh, I have uh, learned uh, the uh, Social Society 5.0 uh, idea in Japan. In the last four quarters, uh, from the fight of COVID to the recovery economy, I in 2020, we see it's an eventful year. We uh, had uh, three lessons. Uh, the first one is uh, to compare uh, in different uh, civilization, how do they respond to the COVID. Uh, second lesson is uh, to how to deal with uh, uncertainties that are uh, uh, in the politics, in the business. And then the three lesson is uh, digitization. We believe 2020, uh, is a watershed for development of digital technology. If I, if we look back in the last four quarters of Q1, uh, we were dedicated to fighting the COVID. Our digital platform was transformed from a commercial platform to be a key social infrastructure at the beginning of March. Uh, our Hema Xianshen system were able to deliver hot meals to the hospitals in Wuhan, uh, to the medical staff in the first, uh, uh, from uh, January to March, uh, we were able to supply uh, medical supplies to China from the whole world. In February, March, uh, 120 million people uh, students uh, were able to uh, go online uh, to receive uh, uh, schooling. The digital platform has become a social platform. Uh, during the heat of the COVID, it has become a shelter for the people. We learned that digital platform uh, can help uh, uh, every individual. Secondly, while fighting the COVID, we need to recover the economy. Chinese government launched a new infrastructure concept, NDRC, also from, uh, advocated businesses to go online, to go to the cloud, to stimulate consumption in Q1 to Q2. We see AI could read the, the uh, CT in 20 seconds. Accuracy is higher than the physicians. In Japan, uh, such AI technology has been applied in 60 to 70 rural hospitals in Japan. Q2, one key difficulty is how to provide the targeted SMEs to get uh, orders and recruit uh, talents. That means uh, collaboration between government and the business is uh, critical. For the private business and the SOEs and the government, we need to engage in collaboration in Zhejiang and Hangzhou. From Q1, uh, we worked on the house code. Q2 house code is uh, still important. Uh, and we also launched uh, services uh, to businesses uh, online uh, through the digital technology. Those uh, companies could recruit people, could uh, uh, manage the orders. Q2, a lot of local governments uh, wanted uh, to uh, trigger consumption via the e-coupon. Q3, we see isolated outbreaks of uh, COVID cases. Uh, we need to upgrade the industry and uh, upgrade the consumption, upgrade uh, governance. Later on, I will elaborate on that. For China and Japan, in digital technology, we have a complementary uh, in the digital technology, in the 5G, blockchain, uh, 3D printing, robotics. For the next decade in Asia, 
we believe uh, Asia will be the most dynamic. We need to help the whole region to rapidly grow and expand. Uh, digital governance, I want to take a, make a start in the last three quarters uh, uh, for the fight against the COVID the economic recovery by leveraging digital governance. It will be highly supplementary to the global governance by leveraging the action adopted during the fight against COVID in January, we will announce and publish a book called the Digital Governance. It reveals how digital technology uh, help the economic recovery. I will elaborate later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Uh, this uh, digital governance and the digital platform could serve as a social platform. Next, uh, I would like to uh, pass the floor back to Japanese side. Thank you. I would like to invite Mr. Yamaga from Futures. I'm a Yamaga. This is the second time for me to attend this forum. I have been working in the Bank of Japan for a long time. 30 private Japanese banks have set up a digital platform. Mr. Uh, Yamasaki said we should have uh, concrete deliverables from this forum. I highly agree. I want to talk about digital currency. Digital currency is the other side of the digital econ uh, economy. When we uh, issue the digital currency, it would generate data. Everyone is paying close attention to digital currency. So that, that means that the central bank actually monopolize all the data. We need to think about that question. Actually, first we need to use the private forces to do innovation. Then, although it's about data, first this is both a, a subject of both old and new. Uh, Japan, over 1,500 years ago, uh, the country was just step established and learned the, the uh, systems of town dynasty. Uh, Japan in the bank system that we had the household uh, system. So therefore you can see that first as a, the foundation of the country you need to have access to the personal data. Then it's about management supervision. Um, so this is the ethical question which cannot be solved like overnight, but we need to work hard uh, in our daily life to solve that issue. For, for, for example, um, there is a movie uh, that is about the George Orwell novel to describe a big event. So we were, we were thinking that the civil efforts is very important. I have several questions as follow. First, uh, civil society through their efforts to establish a code of data. If we look back at the history, the middle century, if you want to, if there's organization want to collect the data more than that of the uh, volume that can be done by a nation, then that organization will be destroyed by the country. So therefore, we need to have a code or rules about the management and monitoring of the data in order to gain trust of people. So therefore, it's very important to have the digital or, and, or the data ownership is very important. The owners has to be, have to be able to understand how my data is being utilized. Otherwise, if you try to use different other methodologies to have this data be utilized. That will be another issue. Second, as for the data management, we need to have multiple bodies to do the regulation, uh, also the comp compilation of the data, so that uh, 
in that way, we can gain the trust of the data owners for long term. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yamasaki. I'd like to give the floor back to China side. Thank you, uh, Mr. Yamaoka. You talked about digital currency as well as the code and the rules of data management. Next, let's give the floor to uh, Mr. Zhao Jianlan, the VP and Chief Representative of Northeast Asia, Tencent Cloud. Mr. Zhao, open your mic, please, Mr. Zhao. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, respect to Mr. Fang, uh, Mr. Yamasaki, I'm the guest. I'm Zhao Jianlan. I'm sending my greetings from our Tencent uh, headquarters in Japan. So in 2019, that the uh, COVID-19 impact our life and many of the offline uh, business and stores, they have um, encountered a big impact. Uh, some of stores even closed. And in that process, digital economy actually helped uh, because digital technology served as a buffer of the economic social cooperation. It buffers hard uh, shocks through resilience and flexibility. And uh, in China during the pandemic, the bestseller, a Chinese apparel brand, had shut down a large number of its physical stores, uh, left less than 10% of stores open in February. So uh, under that circumstances, the bestseller promoted the sales on WeChat mini program app. And, uh, held more than 200 broadcasts. So once the epidemic situation is eased, the physical offline stores reopened. The industry, having learned the uh, upsides of digitalization, they did not stop their steps toward digitali digitalizing. So they, when the offline stores being reopened, they actually have started to build live streaming metrics and with digital technologies. And uh, so through the live streaming, uh, the bestseller, this Chinese brand, they actually have created a record of bringing 4 million sales to the offline store. And uh, in addition, our partner, KE Holdings, or known as Shell, a housing transaction services in China, was listed in, on the New York Stock Exchange. So, Frank Nackney's broker digitally presented his property information online and did the engineering of the transaction process. Shell, the company established for four, three years, has built its current company, the 20 year old Lianjia, in the cloud. Tencent has participated in the project, providing key technology to them, like big data and cloud computing and others. And we believe that efficiency is the key to enterprise operation. The purpose of industrial internet is to reduce costs and increase efficiency. So I think it is a must choice for industries to reach it. And so digitalization makes target more valuable, and then we can continue to optimize it. Uh, as a result, efficiency of production and manufacturing can be improved, supply and the demand can be matched, and maternity service is highly uh, effective. For example, uh, I think that it will ultimately reduce operating costs and improve competitiveness. For example, we can use AI vision technology to assist quality inspectors to catch material defects that human eyes cannot find, and uh, thus uh, increase the defect detection rate to 99%. As for the automobile manufacturing, some driverless cars vehicles can complete 10 million kilometers of tests in a day in a digitally simulated environment. The same test, if we rely entirely on uh, building prototypes and conducting the field, it would require modifying hundreds of vehicles and take years to complete. And uh, so we think that this kind of uh, technology with virtual reality game engine, those digital technologies, not only save, save the cost of uh, building a prototype car and burning oil, but greatly improve the test efficiency. Secondly, the, Ecological co constructing only choice for the industrial development. And uh, uh, Tencent, uh, we uh, uh, have has its own ecology. It's, uh, just like a Tencent, each industry has its own ecology. And in the past two years, we have worked with a uh, to gradually build an open ecology of industrial internet from three dimensions of digital technology supply, providing solutions and helping enterprise to grow. So, 
uh, based on the our open technology alliance we provide ai driven blockchain and other technology to our partners and further we have worked on industrial solutions with more than 800 partners forming more than 300 joint solutions to help our industrial clients we also help our partners grow and improve their digital skills through corporate training and equity investment we are quite happy to see that our partners are growing rapidly Similarly, in the Japanese market, we also see unprecedented organizational challenges as an epidemic pushes industry product methods and use lapse online. In July 2019, Tencent Cloud has officially entered into the Japanese market, and we are having lots of cooperation with many local partners to build industry ecology and win-win. So currently in Japan, we have working with partners in fields like audio and video, gaming, retail manufacturing, and others. So we provide cloud computing, real-time audio and video, AI solutions, many program e-commerce, and uh, smart travel solutions, and other services to local clients in Japan. So we are working together with Japanese local partners to accelerate the digital development uh, of the local business in Japan. Thank you, Mr. Zhao. Next, let's uh, give the floor back to Japan. Thank you very much. The development of uh, tech companies in China, including Tencent and Alibaba, are very rapid. And we understand from Mr. Zhao uh, and also Mr. Liu's speech that we understood how the biggest tech companies in the world, what they are doing to make contribution for the economic development in the world. Okay. Mr. Jia just made a very uh, short uh, greeting just now. Maybe we can give the floor back to you, Mr. Jia, so you can share the, your speech. Yes, uh, because uh, Japan is the host uh, venue, so we'd like to give this opportunity to Mr. Ito from Japan first. Ito. Okay, let's give the floor to Mr. Ito. Let's give some brief observations. How I view these questions and what areas we collaborate in China and Japan. First of all, what kind of digital society we are embracing? We need to describe this together. What we are pursuing after is not a society with monitor cameras everywhere. And we noted that Chinese friends uh, during the pandemic phones or solving the social problem, you are fully using all kinds of digital technologies, um, given the full play of AI technology, especially use some products of those companies with AI students. That is the area maybe we can learn from. On the other hand, uh, the health QR code is quite universal in China. And, uh, but we think those kind of real time tracing and uh, obtaining of personal uh, geographical position, uh, it's kind of real time monitoring. And uh, I think that this may uh, bring out a lot of the issues for the personal data protection, especially Chinese governments, your system of protecting the data. You have maximum the technology, digital technology, uh, but and uh, government uh, also encouraging this trend so much. But all that brings up hidden risks. So during the G20 summit, we also mentioned that when utilizing the digital technology, we need to protect the personal information and privacy. Only by doing so can we uh, make it accessible by all the countries. Uh, for example, cross-border human personal law. Um, and we have a huge uh, uh, such platform that can be secure and the privacy protected. And uh, we think that such uh, regulation is very important. And uh, right now, this issue is under discussion. And in the future, smart city will also to be further uh, developed. 
But do we also need to think about to introduce international standards to protect the privacy of citizens so that we can carry forward this uh, campaign in a more steady way? I think that's the digital society we should put in for. China has law on, uh, on internet security and uh, also has uh, laws on information protection and uh, also data security. Um, and today, all the topics we've discussed can actually is also relevant to these laws. So many uh, foreign investors to China and then uh, once those issues are solved, they can go to uh, China to the investment without ignoring or concerns. So I think that uh, the voices from the public is very important. Okay, then give the floor, let's give the floor to China side. Thank you, Mr. Ito. You mentioned a very important part. For the China's uh, health QR code is tracing personal data whether that's going to be like violent of the personal privacy, I'd like to give you some response. Uh, you know, COVID-19 is really posing a, a great threat to human, all humanity. That's why we have this uh, QR code, but this is only restricted to the uh, epidemic response, not in other areas. Second, China's laws and regulation in terms of, of its implementation and enforcement. And we are discussing how we can use utilize those laws in a more scaled up uh, areas. Uh, we can discuss that later. Next, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Jia Jingting to make a speech. I'm very honored to be here. Uh, this is my first time to join the Beijing Tokyo uh, Forum on the uh, subtopic of digital economy. I would like to share some personal views. Uh, first, uh, we all agree that the world is entering into a digital euro. Uh, we see vibrant uh, innovations, new technologies uh, have uh, emerged. The digital industry is uh, on the rise. Thirdly, te digital technology poses a very profound impact on the social governance. And we forecast that uh, development of digital euro will last a long time. That means uh, digital industry, digital technology, will continue to exert a profound impact on the human society. With regard to this uh, great topic, the two countries uh, engage in discussion to explore how do we engage in collaboration is of a great uh, significance. Not only is uh, significant for China and Japan, it's also of a great significance uh, to the whole world. I highly agree with the Japanese friends' uh, um, proposal that uh, we should uh, find the uh, concrete uh, deliverables uh, following this uh, forum. I also agree suggestions made by Japanese friends on the data governance, uh, and uh, I can see your concerns. Data industry and the technology is still on the rise. Uh, different countries, uh, they are in a different level of development. Uh, our view on this issue could uh, be different, which is uh, wholly understandable. But uh, different uh, views, uh, differences, uh, and no reason to set back our collaboration. On the contrary, we should uh, try to expand uh, collaboration in order to 
um, drive for deliverables uh, following this uh, forum, I would like to make some suggestions. China highly um, values digital industry. Uh, China is uh, building the um, high-tech uh, uh, development zones uh, in the digital industry uh, plays a very important role in terms of uh, technical innovation. The speakers are from Alibaba, from iFlatech, and from Huawei. Uh, those uh, companies are uh, born and uh, grow in the high-tech zones. In the high-tech zones, we have uh, systemic uh, rules and the enabling environments guiding those uh, enterprises. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, national high tech zones in like uh, Yantai, Shenyang. They are deepening collaboration with Japan in the field of the digital industry and digital technology. By leveraging the high tech zones, we could uh, deepen collaboration between the two sides. Uh, of course, uh, it's uh, not uh, limited to the collaboration in the high tech zones. For two countries, I believe uh, we can uh, build a regular communi communication dialogue. Uh, it could be intergovernmental and uh, amongst the different academia or between different enterprises. So we encourage Chinese companies uh, to uh, invest and uh, develop in uh, Japan and vice versa. We welcome uh, Japanese entrepreneurs to set up a shop in China. Uh, your concern and uh, um, how to deal with those uh, concerns, we stand ready to uh, engaging discussions in the industrial parks. Uh, we will attract investment. We provide uh, assistance to those uh, companies in the industrial park, which could uh, create an enabling environment. Uh, it could serve as a platform for the development of uh, collaboration between China and Japan in the digital field. Uh, if you are interested, uh, the Ministry of Science Technology Touch Center stands ready to engage in further discussion with you. Thank you, Mr. Jia. Digital economy is on the rise. There are a lot of issues that they emerge in the course of development. We need to deepen communications to find the solutions. He also mentioned uh, some specific uh, a potential area for collaboration. China's uh, high-tech zones uh, have laid a solid foundation for development of digital technology and industry. We hope that in Japan and China, we could uh, work together to advance uh, development of such intensive uh, uh, high-tech zones or industrial parks. In the first round, uh, the uh, panelists have shared with us their uh, ideas and the pragmatic proposals to further the collaboration. I will pass the floor back to Mr. Um, to the Japanese side. Thank you for your specific proposal. We had the first round of uh, uh, sharing and we will open up the floor for free discussion in the beginning i said that i hope we could come up with some deliverables which got full support i would like to thank you for that how can we develop a regular long-term mechanism for digital collaboration. Uh, maybe we could build a high-tech uh, zone or industrial park uh, between the two countries. Uh, when we exchange uh, ideas, how should we, what are the means uh, and approach for us uh, to change the information? Uh, Mr. Shimada has also made some uh, suggestions in this regard. 
many people mentioned about ownership of the data, the data governance uh, issue, uh, international rules uh, have touched upon it. Uh, however, the private uh, society need uh, to voice uh, your views, what kind of rules and the governance uh, do you need? Uh, both sides have uh, made some points. Uh, in addition to uh, digital technology with regard to AI, how can we better leverage AI in the private uh, sector we need uh, to uh, explore? With regard to digital currency, we see some uh, uh, proposals uh, for the general public. It's very convenient. Uh, uh, like Alibaba and Tencent platforms, uh, you are working vigorously in this regard, uh, but some people's level could uh, be accepted. Uh, if you have uh, any specific uh, proposals or ideas, I hope that you could uh, share with us uh, during the free discussion. Uh, maybe first I would like to give the floor to Mr. Iwamoto as uh, Mr. Yamasaki said, uh, we should uh, put up our proposals. He had uh, talked about uh, the ownership of data is of a top concern for Japanese side. Uh, in the breakout session in the morning on economy and the trade, we also touched about this topic. Two years ago, I visited the headquarters of Huawei uh, in Shenzhen and uh, talked to Mr. Guo Ping. Uh, they said that we did not have a backdoor uh, set up in our products. However, in China, there is an information law. Article 72 says that that's in China. The Chinese enterprises uh, need uh, to help a Chinese uh, 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 department in obeying the management of information. Uh, Article 80 should uh, protect the human rights uh, and uh, to uh, protect uh, people uh, the healthy uh, lifestyle. Uh, so those companies need uh, to support and help the government in this regard. I would like to address this question to a speaker from Huawei. Maybe you can respond to it because this is the issue of uh, concern to us uh, within uh, a scope that you can. We would welcome your re uh, response. Uh, I'm working in NTT. Two years ago, we set up a big data institute with the Japanese government. We will research on the application of a big data. We don't need to go to an industrial line, so industrial park. There are different ways to engage in collaboration. AI is important. I would like to share one example. Einstein wrote a letter in 1939. Uh, he wrote a letter, uranium uh, on the testing and experimenting of uranium uh, to President Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Uh, in his old age, uh, um, Dr. A uh, Einstein regretted uh, his work uh, related to the atomic uh, bomb and uh, the Manhattan Project, uh, they are not only tapped into our brain power, AI, when they might be able to make a, a judgment by itself without the appearance of the humans, we need to develop a global rule to govern AI on the possibility that AI could make its own decisions. Mr. Ivano uh, had made two points. Uh, any response from the Chinese side? Uh, 
uh, you could uh, refute him if you don't agree with him. I thank you for the question. The ownership of data, the data sovereignty, and uh, some uh, uh, concern regarding the AI. We have uh, Mr. Xu from Huawei. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, management of data and uh, governance, I believe for Huawei, it's a global company. Uh, the different countries have different uh, laws and uh, Huawei has to be compliant so that there is a balance uh, between the privacy as well as uh, data security. First, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Iwamoto for your question. It's an uh, honor that uh, two years ago you visited us in our headquarters. In terms of uh, uh, internet security and uh, user privacy, I have said earlier that uh, we take that as uh, the top priority on the life and the death of the company. In the last few years, we have never received any request from any government to provide customer data. Even if we receive such a request, we will not collaborate or respond because Huawei is a private company, private owned company. We stand with our customers, including ATT. Only by respecting the customer and uh, respecting customers' interest and their values, uh, that's the only way we could uh, continue to survive. Our founder, Mr. Ren Zhengfei, mentioned that uh, we are willing even to close our company the, rather than to set up a back door or infringe upon the customer interest. That's why in the last three decades, uh, in over 170 countries around the world, we serve the 3 billion people as customers. There is no incident to show there are any data security issue. There is no motive for us to engage in such activities. Over the last three decades, we built up such a reputation. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, uh, the uh, reputation uh, would uh, collapse. Today we talk a lot about the digital governance. I think the civil force is very, uh, quite a good uh, source. And RCEP and uh, uh, also the uh, security law, if we look at the Chinese government Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it has mentioned that a uh, initiative, call for the initiative for the global uh, data protection, and it has very specific age requirements so we hope that based on bilateral and multilateral platform, including RCEP, it can be, um, this kind of collaboration can happen. So I think that for business, the mutual trust and, and the enhanced cooperation, all this will be very helpful. So in the future, I hope I welcome more uh, Japanese uh, government officials, members from parliament, and uh, also entrepreneurs and scholars from academics come to Huawei, pay a visit to us and uh, understand us more. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Xu. Thank you for your response and comments. I have a question. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Yamaoka. You mentioned about digital currency. So the signing of RCEP is uh, so actually uh, uniting the East Asia region together be become more integrated. So it's even more become a dominant strategy. So is that possible and framework of RCEP that we can uh, distribute uh, digital currency that trans different uh, countries, for example, just like European uh, dollars, like euros. So do you have any idea on that, Mr. Yamaoka? Uh, thank you. As for the digital currency, whether it can trans nations, I think the possibility is quite high compared to that of the paper-based currencies because this uh, currency is just a signal and digital currency is not restricted to any territories. 
all kinds of digital currency trans use for that from global perspective we would say that is being used for example china tourists when they go to japan they pay uh, with alipay or wechat pay so that is a technology being utilized as a scenario but whether we can have a consistent um uh, currency like digital currency trans uh, one digital i think it's not possible but it's still in the far future if the currency they will uh, trans all the regions countries and now we have a consistent issuing then which country shall be responsible to control its liquidity that is an important issue Additionally, the macroeconomy of one country, when the imbalance happens, it may also exhibit to the other countries. Um, so now we need to think about uh, the economic security. So under this kind of cross-border uh, liquidity and flowing, then how can you guarantee the safety and security of your country's economy? So therefore, each country we require their tax and the policy coordination need to be followed up. So in order to uh, achieve that step, I think we still have a long way to go. But China and Japan, we can work together to move forward to that direction. I think think that it can help our economic integration. Okay, uh, next, let's give the floor back to the China side. Just now, I mentioned a few points I'd like to add more. Digital technology and digital industry is in the process of rapid development. Countries already have some existing policies and regulations and the laws are not sound yet. I believe that as continue to be developed, that those policies and the rules will be further improved. Second, the China-Japan cooperation, uh, I think this is an issue this is why issue while law is another issue because laws and orders they are codes and articles for a specific region or society while for business you are a, a legal corporate or legal entity so your operation and management during that as long as you don't violate any laws laws will not restrict you that's my second point my third point is China, Japan, if we can have cooperation on digital technology and the industry, such cooperation will be like uh, having be helpful for the common issues that we are faced. So we can find common solution together. Personally, I believe that we cannot establish a very sound and perfect uh, institutional and uh, uh, policy framework first, then to develop the industry, right? Uh, next point is, you mentioned just now that you have some cooperation with China's uh, Academy of Social Sciences. I would say that I and the D of scientific technology is one thing, but the digital product and digital uh, industrialization is another matter. You don't necessarily need to stay in uh, one like specific area, but I think such industrial base or industrial cluster areas will be helpful for your further development because you can enjoy some policy incentives from those specific um, industrial zones. So that is why I said so. So after deep discussion on the collaboration on how we can have collaboration and also a discussion on the issues with our common concern we can explore a solution together okay thank you mr jia um so japanese side do you have any comments thank you uh, the consensus on rcep and the laws from many countries, including China. So I think that as we're going on, digital technology will be developed further, and uh, there's more scenarios for adopting and using digital technology. 
maybe the law framework and lawmaking won't catch up the speed of the technology development. Maybe we need to have some exception, but we don't know which one will be, which one will be the exception. But for business enterprise, we, during our operation, we may need to draft up some rules ahead of laws uh, or codes. So that's why we need to have such discussion about laws and rules. Okay, uh, Mr. Shimada uh, from Toshiba. So after hearing from all the experts' views, I agree your ideas. So if we only follow the laws that solve all the issues, right? Actually, that's not the case. And what is more important is us is that whether you can gain the recognition and trust from the public, from the society. Those successful Chinese tech companies have all gained recognition from Chinese public. And, and that is now with Chinese laws. But from the status quo, if we put this situation in another country, maybe that's not the case. The model, the successful case, successful practice in China, if you cannot be accepted and recognized by other countries or cannot be trusted by other countries, if that means that you are not successful. So we need to think about this. So therefore, trust is quite important. Can you guarantee justice and fairness and continuity? I think that is one of the very important factors. Therefore, we need to have open and continued discussion on this. So from this sense, I'd like to ask a, a weird question. Uh, Japanese business have done a lot of investments in China, including uh, Toshiba, Hitachi, all have manufacturing factories in China. Yeah, but um, in contrast, Chinese, maybe from China side, you think that this is not uh, fair? Maybe I vary too much. So from this perspective, I would say Chinese friends and uh, I want to have more deepen exchanges, communication with Japan. So what your motivations are to do such uh, communication and exchange? Or what's your expectations? Uh, what goals you may have? What's the char uh, character for Japan market to attract you come to us? Okay, we hope that China side can answer these questions. Uh, those are very good questions. China's digital economy and digital development model, uh, maybe not only doubted by uh, other countries, but in its development, different circle sectors in China also have different understanding of that. So some population, maybe they have some, for example, we call it digital gap or digital divide. So people have concerns. This, it takes time, it's a process, and we are in it right now. And in the meantime, you mentioned whether China uh, communication exchanges and understanding what kind of motivation we have. And actually, we are a firm upholding the globalization. So the information parity and information sharing means that we are trying to reduce mistrust or misunderstanding or misjudgment. So in the past four decades of since China's reform and opening up, we feel deeply about that. I believe many countries in the world, they have so many misunderstandings on other countries, on other people. Uh, the reason for that mostly is also because of uh, disinformation or information imparity. Okay. Um, I'd like to add more comments. In speaking of the China-Japan cooperation, what kind of expectations we have, as mentioned earlier, that I feel like I feel like that we are a quite a large business and we are also a benefit from the China-Japan cooperation. As early in 1978, the University of Science, China Science and Technology has some collaboration with Tokyo University. 
uh, China University of Science Technology. They have some uh, collaborating project with Tokyo University on the electronics part. And, and also had uh, lots of university project with the Japan's rejuvenation uh, association. So all these pro uh, projects have um, achieved lots of deliverable, uh, actual concrete deliverables and also fostered a lot of talents. So some of the talents, they stayed in China to work, while others, uh, some grad they graduated from the uh, Chinese university, then they uh, went to Japan to study in Tokyo for continued study, and then they stayed in Japan to work, and then they become prof uh, experts in their professions. So I think all this collaboration are very helpful to both sides. And up to now, uh, I would say we had more collaborations in the past several years. China's, uh, for example, uh, the Japanese uh, Intelligence Information Research Center, the head of this center, has. we had some uh, discussion with him. One project is that we, the project is that we are having uh, uh, robots to join the uh, college entrance examination and then see the results. So we had a lot of discussion and collaboration in those projects. So all the results uh, is already being scaled up in the industries. So for example, in China, we have over 10,000 schools are using this technology because it can help teachers to uh, test, uh, to review all the test papers. And uh, it also can analyze uh, where the students need to be further improved. So this technology is also being applied in Japan. In the end of 2018, Japan has uh, announced that during the college entrance examination in Japan, it will use the uh, Iflatex uh, intelligence voice assessment uh, technology. So that means the uh, pronunciation uh, valuation is using the Iflatex technology. So that is also one of the um, deliverables which of the China-Japan cooperation. And uh, the news conference was made later uh, in Tokyo, and this technology is beneficial for both countries. In terms of a uh, commercialization, we uh, deploy a lot of uh, partner components, uh, particularly advanced partner components from uh, Japan, which is uh, highly competitive uh, with uh, excellent quality. We have invested in two companies in Japan to engage uh, in uh, basic education and uh, smart hardware. So our translating devices have been uh, sold in 130 countries, which could uh, facilitate uh, dialogue uh, uh, within 60, uh, for over 60 language pairs. Uh, we hope uh, that uh, during the Tokyo Olympic, uh, the translating device could help uh, the tourists. Uh, in uh, 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, uh, we have uh, 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 the organization committee uh, picked the iFly tech uh, uh, to provide the services in the interpretation and the translation. Uh, not only it benefits uh, the general public and the business, uh, it could also benefit uh, from uh, the technological advancement uh, in this regard. Uh, faced uh, with uh, COVID and uh, aging society in both countries, uh, AI, digital technology could uh, offer us more um, application scenarios, and we look forward to deepening the collaboration with Japanese companies. Thank you. Mr. Xu from Huawei would like to add uh, some points. Uh, thank you. Today, I'm uh, 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 very delighted to see our friends uh, in uh, Hitachi and uh, also Toshiba. Over the years, we have uh, collaborated in many fields. Uh, we have uh, discussion covering different uh, angles. Uh, first is uh, the digital infrastructure. Uh, that. Uh, uh, make sure uh, the connectivity. 
in the digital infrastructure, uh, we need the continue, continuous value chain. Yesterday, I attended the opening ceremony of the uh, forum. I listened to the former prime minister, Mr. Fukuka's uh, keynote speech, as well as uh, the speech made uh, by the two foreign ministers of our respective countries. So we hope that uh, through bilateral collaboration, we could uh, advance mutual trust. That's a very good idea. In 2005, uh, in Japan, we set up a branches. Uh, by the end of 2019, we have uh, hired 950 employees. Uh, in addition to serving our customers, uh, we have R&D and the procurement and uh, uh, standardization collaboration. Um, with regard to your questions, uh, we share a lot of uh, commonalities uh, from the past experience. Uh, we sincerely hope that uh, together with our Japanese partners, we could set up a long-term um, relationship with a mutual trust. Yesterday in the opening ceremony, we see that unilateral protectionism, uh, they uh, implement trade protectionism in the name of national security which had a very big impact on the two countries to set up a collaborative relationships in 2019, according to the Oxford, uh, Huawei procured uh, 1.1 trillion Japanese yen worth of uh, products. Uh, and we created uh, uh, 65,000 uh, jobs in Japan, uh, in aggregate. Uh, Japanese uh, economic news also uh, covered uh, that uh, uh, due to the sanction, Japanese uh, enterprise uh, might lose over 1 trillion Japanese yen. Uh, I believe uh, the uh, dialogue and the collaboration between the two governments uh, and uh, consensus uh, between the business sector in uh, rebuilding the supply chain, in engaging equitable, mutually beneficial collaboration, it will be very important. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Xu. Maybe we uh, took a lot of time in this section. I apologize for that. Uh, now the floor is uh, yours, my Japanese friend. First, uh, I would uh, like uh, to give the floor to uh, Mr. Ito, and then I will wrap up. I heard a lot. Uh, I believe uh, rulemaking for digital society is lagging behind. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, gaps uh, in the near future. We need uh, a philosophy and a set of uh, rules or norms or mechanisms that we could uh, jointly formulate and abide by those from the private sector we need to engage in discussion so that we could build a mutually trusting relationship once again, I stress that uh, in this uh, valuable opportunity, for those uh, globally active uh, companies, uh, I would like to pose a question to you. Globally, the expectations uh, from uh, global and uh, from uh, China, are there any differences? Are there any commonalities? Uh, if there are differences, uh, what are the differences? Digital society offers us a lot of convenience. In order to benefit uh, each individual, we need to make sure there is a free and uh, trusting uh, flow of uh, data that is uh, critical. We need to, first of all, build uh, a uh, 
relationship with mutual trust. Uh, last year in the sub forum, uh, I proposed that uh, we should uh, build uh, a mutually beneficial uh, uh, consensus based uh, rule. We need to uh, first uh, recognize uh, what are the differences, uh, what are the common uh, ideas. Uh, uh, we should start from that. Uh, as we said earlier, for the surveillances, uh, uh, many people are very concerned about uh, a surveillance society. In the OECD nations, uh, we are discussing what uh, are the acceptable norms, uh, including the relevant uh, rules uh, in the TPPA, CDP, <laughs> CDPR. I hope that uh, I would like to ask the, uh, our Chinese friends a question. Uh, what is uh, the uh, common views and what are the different views between China and the US uh, and the Japan in this regard? Uh, uh, our Chinese panelists uh, are active uh, globally. You will need uh, rules to abide by to grow your business uh, globally. Different countries nowadays have different rules. Uh, we only have uh, 20 minutes. Let's uh, engage in the discussion of this topic. We do not want to make this uh, sub forum a uh, top shop. We should uh, engage in very specific uh, um, exploration as. Uh, Mr. Xu from Huawei mentioned that some uh, countries uh, practice trade protectionism in the name of national security. Security is uh, ahead of uh, digital uh, development in the private sector. Uh, if they take uh, national security as an excuse, There is uh, unnecessary decoupling in the technical side that, that would uh, hurt the interest of uh, all the parties. We should uh, try to prevent it. Mr. The, uh, the issues raised by Mr. Ito, any response from Chinese friends? Uh, there are two issues here. First is the innovation model of the digital economy. The other is uh, the governance model. Uh, these are the key issues to be discussed uh, going forward in the next decade. We'll see accelerated uh, digitization with regard to differences and commonalities in the last few years in East and uh, uh, Southeast Asian regions. Uh, we see similar digital um, economy development model from e commerce uh, to e entertainment, uh, TikTok. In the US, uh, it's very popular in the, amongst the young people. Uh, with uh, the uh, increasing East Asia integration, the innovation uh, as well as uh, consumption upgrading initiated and led by the young people would uh, be um, one dominant force uh, in the innovation model, we need uh, to make sure we work together to advance it. In China, in the last two decades, I see three uh, points. First, we identify the opportunities. Then we observe what are the challenges. Number two, in reform and opening up, uh, we set up the special zones. Uh, the uh, special economic zones, uh, we should uh, first uh, uh, experiment in the high-tech zone or the free trade zone. Uh, we need the innovation, we need the governance, we could uh, follow this uh, special 
zone approach. In Hainan, we have made a free trade island. In the last few years, we have been advancing the cross-border trade, cross-border flow of data, and cloud-based services. Uh, in addressing the macro issue, first we identify what are the opportunities, then we see what are the challenges. Number two, we could uh, um, uh, reach build consensus uh, on the rules uh, in uh, a special uh, zone. And certainly, uh, the uh, governance of the Eastern nations originated from uh, uh, contain, mean, uh, taming the floods. Uh, because uh, river runs many countries with the uh, co governance, uh, data is like a water. It's not a simple item that involves only one party that needs the wisdom we developed from taming the floods. The data itself, data governance itself, of course, there is the national security challenge. There is the personal information protection challenge. Also, there is the uh, how to leverage digital technology to advance uh, social governance in China and the US uh, and for the East Asia, we could uh, make some uh, experimentation. We could uh, draw lessons from uh, the wisdom in uh, taming the floods. We do not need uh, to uh, govern something that is uh, vibrant and uh, flowing with a very rigid and a fixed uh, rule. Thank you, Mr. Liu. He had uh, mentioned uh, data governance uh, uh, that uh, is uh, we first uh, identify what are the laws that govern the flow of data, then we could uh, discuss what should be the fitting rules governing the data. I believe that is a good concept. Alibaba in China had grown from a very small company to a global platform provider. Of course, it touches upon the protection of personal information that also involves how should they balance the individual personal data and national security and the public good. I think his sharing is quite inspirational for us to think about how to explore or solve this problem at different stages. Uh, we still have another 15 minutes to left. And uh, just like Mr. Yamasaki mentioned, that we weren't able to cover all the issues and all the topics. We cannot discuss everything very clearly. But maybe we just started to, uh, um, talking about some uh, areas. And um, Yes, uh, we cannot just only have one discussion every year. I think that we can uh, have more food exchanges in different areas and in different platforms. Okay, let's give the floor to uh, Japan side. Okay, this is Japan's turn. Uh, we give the floor to Mr. Suzuki. So just as you said, uh, data and the digitalization is a key words for our discussion. So the value is very important. We need to have an idea for the society. We have to have a common idea. Uh, we do some common joint research with the university on the transmission of data. So, so what kind of society we're going to build and what kind of common value we should share? Then this is a start of discussion. Then uh, starting from here, we may have some specific energy on specific technologies. It's so uh, sharing the same and the common value is very important. China has uh, proposed the dual circulation domestically and internationally and uh, in the next stage, the flow of data will also be very important. 
So I hope that based on the mutual values, then we decide the uh, rules and regulations of data flow. Then we can uh, mobilize the businesses to do more things. And so all this requires to have a common value to create an ideal society. I think that is that area, a scenario where we can have can we have to have collaboration. Okay, let's see whether Chinese side still has any other comments. We have another 10 minutes left. As for the specific deliverables, if you have any comments, advices, uh, welcome. Uh, several experts just now mentioned about AI. We have a company. They have a lot of research and data in this regard, that's a Tencent. So Tencent has a value that as a technology is for good. Therefore, I'd like to invite Mr. Zhao Jiannan from Tencent to add some, add some comments. Uh, uh, you mentioned about innovation, collaboration, and, uh, uh, and the support of government. Uh, Mr. Yamasaki and Mr. Fang has created this platform for dialogue and exchange of views. So, so for those businesses who are joining the discussion, uh, Tencent is one of the few starting from PC business and gradually move to the uh, to B business and um, others. So I'd like to share with you some examples. Tencent is the largest gaming company in the world for the past nine years. It's accounting more than 90% of our company revenue. And a large part of our uh, gaming users are Chinese teenagers. They have brought a lot of uh, commercial benefit for Tencent, but Considering uh, the, those teenagers, the young people, they need to focus more their, of their time on study, on learning. So therefore, uh, together with uh, Chinese government and our technologies, whether it's big data or the AI, we have put some rules uh, or restrictions on young players, like how long uh, they, a player can spend uh, per day on game. I think this is driven by social, corporate social responsibility. And this is, we are trying to drive a balance between our corporate benefit to the social responsibility. And uh, some of our peers mentioned that China is driven by innovation. I have worked and lived in Japan for two to three years. I deeply feel that the laws and orders in Japan uh, really holding a very, very important uh, position. I would say from the two largest economies in the world, from this perspective, China and the Japan's, what's driven China and Japan coming to today? And so I would say as currently we have different perspectives on uh, innovation. I remember in the past when I looked uh, in the Nikkei uh, news that Tokyo at 10 30 p.m., uh, you can order uh, food delivery to your home at 10 30 p.m. Uh, in Tokyo. That was quite a big uh, like change for people's lifestyle. But actually, China has done so much, much earlier, like Meituan food delivery and other uh, food delivery services. So I think our collaboration is to learn at the core value so that we can create a different business model. So from that perspective, I would say that we are having more soft power at cloud computing. And when we have uh, talks with uh, Japanese companies like Hitachi, then uh, elevators uh, can be connected with Internet of Things in China's city. And uh, Amazon's projector 
uh, is also having uh, coordination and connecting with Tencent video platforms. So that means in the mean in the future that once project is open, you don't need any other connection than they have the OTT uh, images. And at Unico, they uh, Unico stores in China, they are uh, using lots of mini program uh, for online selling and online shopping. So this technology are provided by Tencent as well. So I would say the technology actually helped uh, businesses for their future development and uh, bring lots of conveniences for people's life and help the business to survive during pandemic. We actually done lots of consideration in this. That is my sharing. Thank you, Xinan. Okay, Mr. Jia would like to say a few words. This is my first time to join this uh, sub forum. There are three high frequency words. Uh, first is mutual trust, uh, Zhu, Zhu based. And uh, Mr. Yamahachi uh, and the Fang has uh, provided this platform for dialogue. I think the civil society can play a greater role. So with this platform, maybe we can start some uh, uh, ongoing exchanges like Chinese universities, Japanese universities, and maybe uh, between the uh, research, uh, research institutes or between businesses. So if we have this ongoing exchange mechanism, it's gonna ex uh, improve our mutual trust, expand our mutual trust, and uh, to create a better future for our future collaboration. It's a very good uh, proposition. So from this kind of like one time of discussion exchange, then we can move on to a ongoing exchange mechanism. We don't have much time left, so we would like to give the uh, time back to Mr. Yamasaki to do the summary. A Chinese friends and the Japanese guests. Uh, you have mentioned, uh, discussed many deep areas and detail. We had lots of detailed discussions, which are all very inspirational. So at the very beginning, uh, I mentioned that we need to have some uh, deliverables, uh, concrete deliverables, uh, and the detailed discussion. All of you have touched upon that. Thank you very much. So Mr. Uh, yeah, what you mentioned, actually also, I want to share with as well last month, China and Japan, Uh, had the first uh, RCEP agreement, which directly connecting both countries together, and in which we also have some rules and the content on the e-commerce transactions. In inside China, uh, there is efforts for carrying out relevant laws and regulations, and the Japanese Suga uh, cabinet is also have a plan for establish the digital administration. So I think after today's sub forum, we cannot make wait for another one year to have another discussion, but maybe we can have virtual discussions more. And I think that we need to give full play of the roles of this platform. I think we have already uh, reached a consensus understanding on this. So based on data, we need to enhance more civil and people to people exchanges and make the a civil society voice heard in terms of the rules and the lawmaking. Mm. And uh, we can discuss many topics, including uh, how we feel about US-China relations, and we can have such multiple discussions, maybe publicly or maybe uh, openly or privately, and what kind of measures we can adopt and uh, other uh, things. So the, we need the to, whenever possible, to continue the exchange between digital operators for the country. So we also would like to propose to establish an ongoing mechanism for the exchange. And uh, the topics and the scope of such mechanism is not only about the uh, digital laws and the rule making, but also AI, big data, and others. We can start um, this mechanism as for how to uh, do that in detail. Uh, like Mr. Jiang mentioned, how we can do uh, collaboration on digital technology. 
you mentioned that we have uh, industrial parks and others, but uh, there are lots of uh, details need to be considered, and some uh, businesses have already started such collaboration. And uh, today we have uh, each of our side we have so many experts and industry insiders to join in this. So I hope that after today's platform, we can uh, we can have a second virtual meeting. Uh, very soon that is my proposal so about this proposal if you have any comments both from china side and japan side please please share with us welcome thank you mr yamasaki thank you for the proposal and uh, we have covered lots of topics today and mainly we focused uh, on um collaboration and Mr. Jia Jinting's proposal is embraced by Japanese side. So we hope that we have more uh, frequent, uh, more often um, exchanges with each other. So it can enhance our mutual understanding. So in the process of mutual understanding, actually it can also help us to learn and understand our, the problem of ourselves better. So it also can help us to identify our own shortcomings. And today's forum is paving a way for future longer term discussion. And uh, so in summary, I would say that all the experts share their comments and observations and we become friends. And uh, looking ahead into the future, we can play a, a greater bond and a bridge um, uh, for the future collaborations. So let's put our hand together uh, for the conclusion of this forum. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Yamasaki, do you have uh, any words want to say? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fang. Okay, that's the end of today's forum. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. And I also would like to thank all of the our uh, staff, our simultaneous interpreters, our backstage staff, our cameraman, and also all the guests who are coming to on site to listen to this forum. And especially my thanks goes to all the uh, guests from China side. Thank you for coming all the way to today's venue. Thank you very much. Thank you.